Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch and today we're going to talk about photogrammetry and the world of game development. We're going to look at a couple of options that are out there, explain to you what the heck a photogrammetry is and why we are talking about it. First off, we are talking about it because of Epic Games. Now just about a week and a half back, Epic Games acquired Capturing Reality, the makers of a photogrammetry software. We're actually going to be looking at three different offerings here, all with different price tags and structures and approaches, but at the same time they all kind of have the same result and that is to use a sequence of photographs to create real world objects. Basically you can create uh, polygonal meshes and a nice full resolution real world texture that goes on top of it. And let's start off with Capturing Reality. Uh, the makers of, I guess it was Reality Captured by Capturing Reality. And that is this guy right here. Now this data set, I actually, I'll show you where you can go ahead and get it. And really, I love this data set quite simply because it was taken with a drone. And this is the most effective capture I've seen with the least number of photographs. Some of these things, if you're going to uh, recreate a chapel somewhere, you might need to take hundreds if not thousands of photographs and and in this case they did it with like 40 which is an impressive task because trust me i suck at photogrammetry i just can't get this to work uh, but we'll talk about a little bit of why that is in just a bit but you can see this is um somewhere in colorado shot with a number of drones you see here this is the result of running it through uh, capturing reality. Now, the way the capturing reality works is basically you submit everything up and it is uh, done on a per transaction basis. And one of the things that Epic Games did is when they acquired it, they changed the pricing immediately. So it's on credit based. You can see this particular capture, for example, should be giving me pricing details right here. If I click there, all right, I'm not sure why I'm not. Okay, here we go. I'm clicking the wrong thing. So in this case, for me to actually get the model and texture I generated here, it's going to cost me 135 credits, which is also known as 34 cents, which is uh, it's fairly cheap. So you basically, this is on a pay per use basis. So if you want to capture, uh, recreate a countryside, here it is. They basically flew a, ro a drone around, captured it from a number of different vantage points. Now what you're seeing, and this is the way they all work, all the all of the programs we're looking at today, you're going to see up here, we have a number of different, uh, basically, picture sources. This is where the photos were taken from. And over here, you can see the photos in action. So if I actually select it over there, we can get the corresponding uh, camera that it takes up here. And those are all used together. Basically, they stitch together this scene, and you run it through a series of processes. First thing you do is align all the images. You calculate the model. You simplify it, colorize it, texture, uh, and this is your end result. Speaking of end results, this is taking, I'm not sure which one I actually took this from, but uh, this is from Meshroom, okay, which we're going to cover in just a second. This is the model in Blender. Now, there's something weird going on with the orbiting when I navigate around. Whoa! When I navigate around with the WASD camera. But as you can see, you can get the models out and import them into your content creation of choice. So if you want to recreate a number of real world environments, or if you want to re like scan an actual item and then retopple it for uh, game ready use, that is an option for you. All right, so anyways, the first one we looked at here, this is capturing reality. Now the upsides to this one is that it is now, um, uh, basically a whole lot cheaper than it used to be. And I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being free for all users of um, Unreal Engine. That's kind of the way Epic Games rolls with this kind of stuff, but that hasn't been announced yet. But they did cut the pricing. And realistically, you pay for what you use, and you could get this scene out for, like I said, 35 cents kind of thing. Everything you see here, you can download the program, use it an infinite amount of time. It's just when you want to export out that you have to pay credits. So that is their approach to it. The next one we are looking at is another option. I've actually covered this on the channel in the past. This one here is Meshroom. Now all of these, I basically took them in, dumped in the sequence of photographs, the exact same series of photographs. You can see they recreate in 3D space. So those are the positions they were shot from. And they generate normally what's called a point cloud. And that point cloud in the end also goes ahead and creates a mesh. Now this one follows this uh, this graph of nodes. So if you want to skip things, you can. If you want to change settings for anything, you can do so right here. So you can you can update the the amount of detail, the fidelity, the long the amount of time it's going to take. You can have it the mesh filtering. I could drop in a simplify node in here and have it um, you know create something a little bit simpler for me. I can modify how the textures are generated, the size of the textures, and all of that. And then what happens with this is that well, again, this here is the object. Ugh 
is the OBJ file that is exported out from Meshroom. So this is an example of the results Meshroom generates. It actually will create you a directory uh, of results. Let me go ahead and find it. So again, here are all of the raw materials that went in. So these are the source images that was used in all of the examples you're seeing today to stitch together the 3D environment. And then in the case of Meshroom, let's go here. It's of course that's in temp because everything's in temp. Uh, Meshroom cache. So you're gonna see here all the various different stages that it goes through in its process which is this is the default pipeline when you basically drop in a new project and hit start, it will run through these particular steps. Well, each one of these has a folder. So you come here, the output for it, if you want the fully textured scene, you can go in here, find the most recent uh, render that you've got, such as this one, and the, uh, the texture files and the OBJ file, and it's huge, it's gonna be in here. Which by the way, that, uh, we'll, we'll talk about how you can reduce that down a bit. So first off, you can reduce every single program we're talking about today has a simplify algorithm built in, but there generally is a better solution for that. Or of course you can come in by hand and retopo things, but I'm lazy. So I like a computer to do the work for me. All right, so this is option number two. Now the nicest thing about Meshroom is it is completely and utterly free. So it's a good starting point. I will also admit though, it's the slowest of the, the, the programs I'm looking at here. Uh, by a fair margin, to be honest, this, this scene took, um, and, and it's only a 45 image scene, and it took probably close to an hour on my machine. Uh, whereas the, I would argue that uh, capturing reality or reality capture is probably the fastest option out there. And now we're gonna get into the third example here. And that is a program called Agisoft Metashape. And this one is probably my personal favorite. I like the results that come out of it. I like the experience. I think what you're seeing here looks the best. The performance is quite solid. And you'll probably agree in terms of the, the scan quality that you're seeing inside of the application itself, that looks sharp. That is game ready. This one consistently gave me the best results with my crap skills. And it was the same process. So I didn't tweak any of these. So every one of them, if you're an expert in this field, there's, there's a number of settings you can go in there and change and tweak and configure and so on. In this case, I literally, if there was a go button, a magic go button, I hit the magic go button and let it do its thing. If there was um, a process I had to walk through, like for example, with this one, the workflow goes basically top down. So you align the photos, which is what you see them all aligned in space here, all the various different images. So you're going to select an image here. Like so, they are, so image 3575, uh, 3575, that guy. So see right there, that is the source from this particular image. So the first thing it does is it aligns all the images in the 3D world. And then you gotta click on the next process, which is to build the point cloud. And then you build a mesh from the point cloud. And then you build a texture from the mesh. And then the nice thing with this guy is you go ahead and export out. And you can export out the model completely textured and you have a ton of options here. So you can export out as FBX, OBJ, 3DS. Um, you've got uh, GLTF formats in there. Th there is a ton of different options in here, including Alembic support, STL support, and so on. The downside here is this program is also by far and away the most expensive of the options we are looking at. But again, I, I personally found it gave me the best results, especially when I worked from my own stuff. Now, I gotta also warn you at that end, if you're sitting there going, oh, I can, awesome, I can use this program to you know scan whatever in the world, I can spit it into my game. Let me just tell you, there is more to the skill of acquiring images than you probably think. For example, here is my Mini Cooper. And I did a number of things wrong here. So when I scanned this thing, I basically just kind of did a 360 scan, elevated it a little bit, uh, shot it from higher uh, value, so on. I shot everything here uh, with my um, Samsung uh, S21 in pro mode, uh, both in saving as raw format and as JPEG files, which we'll find there is a difference in each, like in terms of uh, the, uh, Certain programs like RAW, other programs want processed images and the rule of thumb, there isn't a rule of thumb. For example, I found Meshroom works so much better with RAW. I've also played around, my wife has a Canon DSL camera. I tried it out. Every time I tried just about anything, I got great results on things like the ground. Look at the ground here. The ground looks, ground looks good. Like that is ready to use. If I had to capture like a parking lot or a parking lot texture. And if you look at my car, actually, in all honesty, the car looks pretty good too, sort of. 
Ooh, okay, that didn't turn out. Okay, so you can see how you can almost capture it. Now, one of the things I've learned after the fact is actually uh, photogrammetry for something like a car is about as hard of a topic as you can get. It's a glossy reflective surface, even when I haven't watched it in a long time. Uh, I shot this during the day, which is a kind of a bad deal. What you should do is get out there, shoot your stuff. If you're doing it outside, do it on an overcast day where you have less interplay. So you can see here what's screwing this up is reflections that it's pulling in from elsewhere in the world. So there is definitely some, uh, somewhat of a learning curve. As you say, I think I'm about halfway there. I got half of a mini working here. But at the same time, you can also see how I picked up the ground around it awesomely. And I, this isn't just one of my, my scans. I have done so many scans and some things worked out pretty good. I got a decent looking tree, a decent looking fire hydrant, a curb that looks good, some stop signs that look solid. But anytime I tried to capture something complex, something like, uh, the two examples I used were my car and a gumball machine, and both are very, very hard to capture because, and you're going to notice here, it didn't do a bad job on the car. It didn't even try on the windows. So there is a skill here. There's a, there's a glass top uh, sunroof on this car too, and it just bombed it. So just know certain things are harder to capture than other things. Things with glossy reflective surface or light, they are hard. And the other thing is your camera settings. There are a number of articles you will find on the internet that tell you, you know, set your f-stop to this, your ISO to that. All of these things capture in RAW or don't capture in RAW. Really, it comes down to your program and what gives you the best results. So you're going to have to experiment a ton. The other thing is basically the more you can feed it, the more images you send it, the happier it will generally be. So you'll notice here, I sent this guy over 100 images. And if you come in, look, it scanned my tires extremely well. And this isn't the rendered result. This is a preview. So if I actually render this out fully, I probably have a usable model. It's way too dense, too many polygons, but you get an idea of what you can do. But I also want to show you like my epic fail here uh, so that you have an idea of just sort of the challenges that go with photogrammetry. So don't expect this to be, oh, I'll just take a bunch of photographs and send them up. There is skill involved here, skill I particularly lack. And also I picked one of the hardest subjects you could do. I wouldn't recommend that. So uh, if you're interested in learning a bit more about anything we covered here today, the first one we've got is capturing reality. I will link all these in the linked article down below. Recently buy, bought, once again, by Epic Games, and they made the pricing cheaper. That is definitely nice. This one is more of a paper usage thing. Uh, and I would say in terms of actually using it, it, it was about middle of the road. This is the fastest one by quite a margin from my experience. It goes this one, uh, and then the Agisoft, and then Meshroom uh, in terms of speed. And it goes this one to Agisoft, it, it's not a really big gap. And then from there to Meshroom is a huge gap in speed, at least on my system. Uh, so we got Mesh Room from Alice Vision. As I mentioned, this guy is completely free, and that is pretty awesome. It's also a pretty good amount of uh, materials and stuff out there to learn from, so if you want to get in there, you can. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we've got Agisoft Metashape. This one is available on a 30-day trial. This one gave me the best results, was probably the easiest to work with, has the best ex exporting options, has a number of different uh, models available. Unfortunately, it also has the highest price tag. So this one is uh, standard edition is $179, whereas your node lock license is $3,500 for price for the um, for the upgrade. I forget the exact term difference between the the versions. Uh, just a sec. All right, managed to find the difference. So you're, you're losing some stuff, but I find actually a lot of the stuff in the enterprise or the pro version are more enterprising, the kind of stuff that corporate companies would do. So geo-reference, DSM, DTM generation, uh, ground control and checkpoints. So if you're doing an engineering survey, uh, this is more important to you. So you, if you're using spherical or cylindrical, cylindrical camera, multiple camera setups and so on, satellite imagery and all that kind of stuff, you need exact measurements and precision stuff. That's when you need the pro version. Whereas the standard version for, you know, game development approaches is probably more than sufficient. So that's the, the whole big jump in price that you saw there was more of a matter of if you were doing geographic surveys, that kind of stuff. So I think you are fine at that one particular version. But as you saw, the price definitely is higher. So $179, if you're doing this and it's saving you from having to model times, that pays for itself pretty quickly. But the kicker is that $179 before they went and changed the licensing 
for reality capture before the pricing came down by like a, but a quarter of what it was before that's 179 paid for itself really really fast but now you're looking uh this particular scan as we saw in action well here my mini for example this ugly thing would cost you a buck so if you do 179 scans all of a sudden, Agisoft is the better price just on straight volume output. But I do, again, have to put, with my limited simpleton view of photogrammetry, I actually found Metashape to be the best of the, the options out there. Unfortunately, it's also the one with the greatest price tag. Uh, but if you want to get in and play around with this stuff, well, this one, no price tag at all, period. Check out Meshroom. And then uh, Reality Capture right here is you can use it unlimited for free until you want to actually export out. So you can get an idea how well your, your capture works and the works work. And you can just basically pay if you like the results. Or if you find yourself doing a ton of this stuff, or you just basically straight out prefer the workflow like I did, Agisoft at 179 bucks is the third option there. There are other capture programs out there, but these are the three I'm going to focus on in this particular video. Now, one last thing to talk about. And I lost track of where I was here. Uh, if you want to grab the actual images I got that came from Drone Mapper, that was Red Rocks, Colorado, we saw in action. For 45 high resolution images, this is the best uh, photogrammetry scan I have seen yet. The results to the, the minimum number of images put in, this is one of the most impressive ones to start from, in my opinion. And it's a great way to test the various different programs out there because 45 images is a very short amount and it's quick so that's where i got this but it's available from drone mapper you can download these jpeg collections yourself just feed them on in if you wish and then finally if you do bring your meshes out every one of these tools has a simplified tool but a dedicated simplified tool available as an open source option out there is something called instant meshes this was actually integrated directly into modo as an option and another program i can't think of right off the hand but if you need to simplify your meshes i did a video on this in the past but do check out instant meshes i will link that in the linked article down below so hopefully you found that useful that is photogrammetry in the world of game development now go forth and try to make something that isn't a car don't start with a car it's a very bad idea to try and make a car. <laughs> it doesn't work well. Start with landscapes. Landscapes work very well. And if you got a drone, you can do some wonderful stuff with this one. So anyways, that is photogrammetry in the world of game development. Let me know what you think. Let me know of these three programs. If you've used them all, what do you like the best? Again, Meshroom, 100% free. Uh, Agisoft, one-time price. And Reality Capture, a paper use where the prices came way down because Epic Games bought them. Let me know what you think. Comments below. And I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.